Hi, I'm Mark Cleghorn. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And uh, today we're talking about triggering the camera and file transfer using the likes of the Case Air wireless uh, product. It's a little dongle uh, produced by Tether Tools. Um, if you're a photographer that needs to actually shoot remote, uh, remotely, so in other words, the, the camera's going to be at the kind of the other end of a church, or it's going to be above and quite high and kind of pretty much out of access, what you want to be able to do is have some form of camera control and not just kind of triggering with a cable release, all right? Um, the case air can be controlled either by uh, the software that you can free download to the actual PC, or you can ba basically, as I've done here, we've actually downloaded it to the app. Let's just kind of really get things going fast, okay? We're not gonna talk about it for a long time. I wanna show you the cool things that we, we can be doing. So in this film, part, part three, we're just really looking at what the app can do. So let's take the photograph, cheesy smile, and um, straight, straight away, it takes the photograph, it comes straight onto the app itself, and then basically you can see it's up on the screen. Now, if you just got it out of the box and you want to be able to get it up, up and going straight away, I want to show you what to do. First things first, let's switch the app off, all right? So it's gone. Now, when you're getting it out, out of the box, your camera is going to be obviously in a probably switched off mode. It's got to be in that mode, okay? And then as far as the uh, connection is concerned, your case air will obviously be switched off. And if it's switched off, there's no lights visible by here. Okay, if there's any lights on, you need to press and hold this button and then it'll go off. The case air is gonna be uh, tethered into the camera port itself, yes? And as the connectivity, because I'm using a trigger of the flash on the hot, uh, the hot shoe, I'm just using the little jerk stopper, this little plastic device and a little piece of cord that comes with it, okay? There's a variety of cables that come with the case air for the different cameras anyway. Um, but basically this kind of uh, allows it to actually have some security and just not dongle and put in all the weight on the port. Right, let's get going. Switch the case air on. So in other words, press and hold until you've got some lights come on. Now at the top light, it's gonna be orange or green, all right? If there's no light, it means there's no power. So in other words, in this case, it's orange. It means it has some charge, but not fully charged. Now we're seeing a blue blinking uh, uh, light, okay? Which means it's trying to set up its wireless connectivity at this point. So you'll find that when you first switch it on, two lights will come on, either an orange and a blue, and then a, or a green and a blue. Um, and then whichever that is, then all of a sudden the blue will switch itself off and it will then start to blink. When it comes back to the solid, like we're seeing here now, basically it's, it's ready to rock as it were. We're ready to shoot, okay? Next thing's next. Okay, we're gonna switch camera on. That's the set of uh, the setup that we're doing, yeah? Now we'll have um, pretty much total remote cha uh, changes on all the camera setups anyway. So we don't necessarily need to kind of set the camera up straight away, all right. Next, what we wanna do is go into our um, phone settings here, gonna click onto Wi-Fi, and then we're gonna wait for the um, uh, connectivity of the, wi uh, the wireless of the case air to come up. If you find it's not coming up straight away, don't panic too much. Just give it a couple of minutes or about a minute to actually come live. If for any reason it's not coming up, switch your Wi-Fi off and then back on again. It's, us it's usually going to come in. So then we can see the case um, ready straight away. And that's going to be our Wi-Fi connectivity. Okay, so we can just get rid of that. Now all I'm going to do is basically launch the app. Now the uh, Aircase app uh, you can download for either Android or in my case an iOS device. And uh, the kind of the symbol is a black square, as you can see, a slight gray, uh, the gradient on the black with three orange stripes. Clicking onto that one opens it up. And pretty much if you've downloaded the right one, you've got the Air Remote come up. If you've downloaded the wrong, uh, the wrong one, don't blame me. So uh, in this case, as soon as it opens up, as you'll see, it's basically in live view mode. Okay, so it turns the camera into the live view mode straight, uh, straight away. Um, to switch the live view off, you basically just touch this little um, eye and then straight away, you'll get a black screen and pretty much it's ready to go. 
you'll see at the top of the app that it's showing the 5D Mark III three here. So it's connected to the 5D Mark III. We saw it live anyway, so you know that. But if you're not seeing a camera up there, hit the refresh button, see if it comes live. Otherwise, there's some kind of connectivity going wrong. But at this stage, che uh, cheesy smile Cleghorn, take a photograph and pretty much we're done. So I've set it just to transfer the JPEG file through and that's what we've got. And so straight away we've got an image. I can kind of pinch in to get sharp and kind of a way to actually see the image in full. I've got lots of control elements to actually uh, change the look and the feel to the photograph as well with it. But in the purest part, let's just refresh what I just said, okay? The first things first, have everything off, yes? then switch the case air on. Wait for the small little blue light to go from solid to then flashing. After it's flashing, it will become solid blue again. At that point, switch the camera on. Once the camera is on, go to your device, whatever it is, in this case, my, I, my iPhone or your PC or an Android device, whatever you're using, yeah? Uh, and then basically make sure in your settings that you've connected into the Wi-Fi of the case air, it says case, yes? If it's not showing up, switch your Wi-Fi off, then switch it on again and it should appear. Once we've done that, launch the app, pretty much we're ready to rock. So again, just to prove the point, cheesy smile one, Cheesy Smile 2, and uh, again, we can kind of get our images straight in here. Now, I would say if you're photographing from the front of a church or you're photographing from, you know, the camera is above looking down, you've set it in a position that you literally just can't change, or you're doing some macro photography and you don't really want to actually go in and kind of fiddle with the camera or give it any kind of tremor and so on, you, you're kind of really going to want to take control of the camera settings from here. So um, if you're looking uh, kind of across the uh, middle, obviously the top of it kind of shows that there's a histogram kind of showing the little right arrow, he says, flies out and I can switch the histogram off if that's what I want to do. Um, I can look at the EXIF information or switch that off. That's really down to me. I can download the image. I've just done that. Um, I can basically three the three dots to send it to people that you might like. So what else are we going to do? So the, fir the first thing is, just like you're going to look for a day to swipe left or swipe right, all right? So if we basically swipe to the right, this is where all my settings for the camera are going to be. So from within here, I can go and make mistakes. Let's shoot on 320th of a second. Swipe it back again. Take the shot. See you've got a sync problem by actually the, uh, the flash not having enough uh, time to actually record on the full kind of CCD itself, as it were. Okay, so just swiping back to the right again, going back in, setting the correct shutter speed that you want it to be. We can go in and basically change the ISO. So in other words, let's say I wanted a bigger depth of field than F4. I don't want to change the flash settings as such. I want to go in and shoot at F8. I'm going to go in now and basically choose F8 on the apertures. By doing that, I'm now going to choose 400 ISO straight away. Cheesy smile, Clegg. Let's do 400. And this is going to give me a corrected shutter speed, a greater depth of field, uh, and basically I've done the work. Now, obviously, if we were using the likes of speed light photography and everything else, as you change the aperture and you're working in TTL mode, let's say, it would actually talk together and adjust the flashes up or down to actually match what you're trying to do. Okay, so some really good kind of finishes there. Uh, we can also go in and change the white balance. That's something I do quite a lot. If I just kind of switch it on to tungsten for a minute, let me go back to my 100 ISO, back to my F4 swipe back again and basically at this at this point I'm going to go blue so if you begin to watch resident alien on basically uh, sky at present you'll know I'm a little bit blue now at this point why is it blue because I'm shooting in flash the opposite of white uh, as far as the tungsten is concerned is going to be blue so remember flash we kind of 5600 Kelvin as such and when we put it into a tungsten mode and we're using the same flash it's going to come out blue so you can make some errors and fix them. So don't worry if you've basically set the camera up wrong. You can basically then quickly fix it without any real trouble. What else have we got here? Well, we talked about the live view. 
So I think this is really good when you're working from a distance away. I think it's about 150 feet um, that it kind of works with. It might be longer than that. Um, but as far as the kind of shot from the likes of a uh, location, perhaps I'm photographing an inter interior of a hotel. I've run out of flash, whatever it is, I need to paint some light around the place. Then uh, realistically, I can take the photograph from here and I can see again if I'm going to be in shot from where the camera is based. So kind of lots of ways to actually do it. Remember, switch off the magic eye. It comes on by uh, default when you first switch this on. I suppose it's to show you that everything is working together. Albums will basically show us the images. You can see that already. It also includes any images that are on the card. And then what we've got here is the three little kind of uh, uh, quick changes. So if you didn't want to do a huge amount of change to the image, just shutter speed up, map your ISO. The three little kind of uh, sliders, as you can see just by here, that's what that kind of represents anyway. Touching that again will take it off screen. Remember, if you want to work in some more kind of uh, uh, dynamic modes, in other words, if you want to do focus stack, stack in for the likes of product photography or macro photography, it's got the ability here. If you want to do time lapse photography, then it's got the options as well. If you want to do video as well, it'll actually work for us. Um, so as far as the, the kind of the, set, uh, the setup's concerned, that's really down to uh, you. The next thing would be is, as far as the settings are concerned, what I would recommend to you, especially if you're using an iOS device um, to basically shoot with, uh, you definitely don't want a raw file kind of coming down to your phone if possible, because you're soon going to run out of actually space on your phone and things really. So uh, basically, you can either switch it on or switch it off to make sure that it basically isn't going to be downloading that raw file as well. But you can play around with the app. It's so, sim uh, so simple to use, uh, you're going to love it. So uh, as far as the, cap uh, the capture stage is concerned, once everything's correct, you're now king of the selfies. <laughs>